want to welcome all of you to the Lord's house this one o'clock afternoon, uh, snowy as we celebrate Ash Wednesday. Uh, I don't know if celebrates the right, right word. We call to God for forgiveness and realize that we're in need of him. The service, this kicks off our 40 days of Lent, not counting Sundays as we prepare for Easter. And if you haven't gotten one yet, there are devotions in the back, or if you know somebody that would need one, uh, feel free to take them. We uh, printed about 50 extra copies other than those that we put in the mail. And this series, we're going to go through all sorts of different means that God uses to do his will in the world. Uh, Tonight, or Right now at one o'clock, we're gonna look at a couple of the means. He works through the means of grace in the Lord's Supper. We're reminded of our baptism. Uh, He works through fellow people. And we'll look at a little bit at ashes. This week's devotions are on ashes, which is kind of fascinating as you look at the scriptures. Also, uh, if you want the full announcements, we put those on a big sheet. Otherwise, everything else is printed. Uh, in the bulletin or on the screen. With that said, if you're able, would you please rise? We'll call on our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We are dust, and to dust we shall return. With fasting and weeping and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. We have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed the desires of our hearts and offended against your law. This time we will do the imposition of ashes. I'd ask if you could come up the side if you'd like to receive them and then come to the center and then you can return to your seat. If you don't wish to have ashes, you can Of course, remain in the pew until we complete. So we'll just come right up uh, the side aisle or you can come on this side too. We'll continue with the service as we realize that we are dust and to dust you shall return, that we bring our sins before God and the mercy of God 
our Savior Jesus Christ was sent to die in our place, in the means of the cross, and by the shedding of his blood, your sin are forgiven. Go, forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're able, would you please rise? We call out to God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy on us and all nations. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting all our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading set for this Ash Wednesday is from Esther, chapter 4. Uh, Esther has become the queen in the book at this point, and she is uh, through that beauty contest. And of course, Mordecai, her cousin, has been at the gate and he saved the king's life once, although he doesn't remember that. So we'll pick up in chapter 4 says, when Mordecai learned all that had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city and he cried out with a loud and bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate for no one is allowed to enter the king's gate clothed in sackcloth. And in every province, wherever the king's command and his decree reached, there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting and weeping and lamenting, and many of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's young women and her eunuchs came and told her, the queen was deeply distressed. She sent garments to clothe Mordecai so that he might take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called for Hathach, one of the king's eunuchs, who had been appointed to attend her and ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what this was and why it was. And then we'll continue with verse 12, just a reminder what had happened. Evil or advisor Haman had uh, basically made a law that all the Jews were to be put to death. That's why they're wearing the sackcloth and ashes. Verse 12. And they told Mordecai what Esther had said. Then Mordecai told her, in the king's palace, you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise from the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf. And do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my young women will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle uh, point is uh, from 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he always, or he says, in a favorable time, I listen to you. And in a day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. 
Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way by great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left. Through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you're able, would you rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel? The Holy Gospel comes to us from St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. In verse 16, And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up your, for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us made and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism addition of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
may be seated. We're going to sing the uh, sermon hymn. I changed it up so that we had one that's a little easier to do for one o'clock. Um, oh Lord, throughout these 40 days. Peace and mercy are yours from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we're going to begin this series on means, how God works through means and me, in other words, you and I, and with this story of Esther, true account of Queen Esther and, of course, Xerxes. But to kind of get you in the mood, and I apologize in advance if you've heard this before, but I want to tell a, a story that's probably a lot older than I am. It's about a young lady. She had gone to a gas station and accidentally locked the car with her keys in it and it running and her baby in the back seat. So obviously a bad situation. So at the gas station, she ran in and went to the attendant and asked, do you have any way that you can get into the car? Can you help me? And of course, he didn't know what to do. He ran to the back and he got a coat hanger and said, I don't know what to do, but do your best with this. So she went out front and of course tried to jimmy its way into the, the window and wiggled around to get it to open the uh, the door well obviously it didn't work so she got down on her knees and prayed to god lord please provide someone who is able to help and get the my baby out of the car amen well not too long after that a man came up to her she was trying again with the uh, coat hanger and it wasn't working and he said ma'am do you need some help she said yeah, can you do something? He said, definitely. So he took hold of that hanger, put it in, and a couple little wiggles, boom, it was unlocked, and she was able to get in. You see, God had worked through means. So she says, Mr., how can I thank you so much? I had just got done praying, and God sent me you to be with her. How did you know how to unlock this car with the coat hanger? He said, well... I just got out of prison last week and I had been in prison for stealing hundreds and hundreds of cars. She said to him, oh, thank God for giving me a professional. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's bad, but still, you kind of get the idea that God works through people. The skills and abilities that he has given us, he desires to use. And that's what we see in the book of Esther. You see, Esther, just a young girl when we first are introduced, and her um, cousin Mordecai, she is a nobody, but of course, King Xerxes, I don't know if you remember the whole stories, but King Xerxes had asked his wife Vashti, the queen, to come before him and all the guys are drunk. And my guess is what that means is she's supposed to flaunt her stuff in front of all of them and she refused. And of course, in order to not ruin his reputation and so that all wives will obey their husbands, the advisors tell him to depose her and they do so. And in place, they ask for a beauty contest to find somebody beautiful and fitting to be the queen. And of course, Esther, going through all the procedures, ends up being found. And she ends up becoming the queen. Now, my guess is she probably didn't want to be the queen, 
After all, she's Jewish. She's a Hebrew. She's a believer in the true God. And here you've got this pagan king that she's going to be married to, which be, would be against the law in every way. But here she is. Now is the queen. Now, on the side, we know the story that Haman has been plotting evil against the Jews. He's, for whatever reason, jealous. He wants nothing to do with them. You remember Mordecai. <laughs> Mordecai went bow down to him while everybody else did. And so he gets revenge by, of course, tricking the king into issuing an edict to kill all of the Jews. And this is what brings Mordecai down on his knee, knees with sackcloth and ashes. Now, my guess is it wasn't just a cross. He probably covered himself in ashes. Because what we use ashes for, of course, these were made out of the palm branches that were used for celebration. And I did this this morning again at St. Paul's. I took a whole bunch of palm branches and it's this big stack and you burn them and they become basically nothing. Just a tiny bit of ash out of this huge amount of branches, which is a good reminder of how God can take what is vibrant and beautiful and it becomes nothing. And before God, we put it on and it reminds us we are nothing before him. We need his help. And that's the idea of putting on sackcloth and ashes microphone. So the ashes are on and Queen Esther knows nothing about all of this. And so of course she asks for help. What's going on Mordecai through her servant? And of course the news is reported and she wants him to take off the ashes. That's inappropriate. But no, they need to be praying and calling out to God at this time. So God works through means. Esther realizes that if she goes before her husband, the king, at this inopportune time, he could put her to death, just like Vashti was disposed before. But so she asks Mordecai and all of her court to, of course, pray, to fast for the next three days and nights for her, because this is serious business. She does so and goes to him. And you get the idea, she's scared to death to go in because even when she finally goes in and God answers the prayer and, the, and of course, the scepter is laid down and she's allowed to speak, she doesn't even mention the edict, but just simply says, I want you, King Xerxes, to come to a banquet, you and Haman. And of course, Haman's all excited when he hears about it, and they come to the banquet. But even then, she doesn't tell what's on her heart and mind and simply invites again to a second banquet. But I like what Mordecai did. Did you, did you notice? He said, for such a time as this, that you are in this position. And I want you to think about that for your life, too. Do you realize you woke up this morning? God put you here on this planet for such a time as this. Now, a lot of what we're to do in this life might not seem so glamorous. It could be working at the hospital, helping patients. It could be uh, carpentry or putting together a window or uh, making a cabinet or whatever it might be. That does benefit those around us. God put us here to do those various vocations to be husbands and wives, grandparents and grandchildren, to carry out basic everyday tasks. Now, I'll admit, we've also been given various gifts and abilities that God wants us to use as well. If you're a good singer, we're called to use that for his glory. If we're good at baking, baking to help other people. Maybe you have a gift of administration, using that for the sake of his church. So those are special gifts. But in Esther's case, this, this is even, she had beauty, which allowed her to have this position to be able to talk to the king 
himself for such a time as this. God puts us in these places to use it. In fact, the elders met last night and we were talking a little bit about means, about how God can use us. This COVID-19 has been really tough on not just Calvary, but churches across the United States. And it's very, very difficult um, for some to even yet come out in this very difficult time. And one thing we talked about is that as Christians, we can come alongside those that um, haven't been out or have been away and pray for them and encourage them and show that we still care. Not just me as a pastor, but each one of us to pray for our fellow relatives. God put us here for such a time as this. So think about Jesus himself. Why did he come at 30 AD? Well, it was really for such a time as this. He took all of our sins on himself. He took them on the cross for such a time as this. All of our failures, all of the times that we haven't taken advantage of the time that God has given us. And he died on that cross to take it completely away and giving us eternal life. And for such a time as this, he gave us the Ten Commandments and the law. He gave us his teaching that is greater than any of the Old Testament teaching. Of course, loving him and loving our neighbor as well. But as you go today, I want you to think about that. We have the, these, of course, means of ashes on our forehead. Of course, that reminds us of our sin, but also that Jesus has taken it away and that we need God in this world. When we need him to help us to be able to be his hands and feet, his means in the world. So I wanna close with a simple story. I actually had another plan for this sermon today, but I read this this morning and I was intrigued by it. Uh, there is a, a lady in Madagascar and she was part of the Lutheran Hour Ministries. And I'll admit, I don't think about Lutheran Hour Ministries in Madagascar very often, except when it comes to my email on Ash Wednesday. And she had shared a, that her niece was an unbeliever. And so she had been praying for her, kind of like we're talking about today, for such a time as this, she felt she needed to be there for her niece, prayed for her and encouraged her to listen to the Lutheran Hour of Madagascar. And she did. And God used whoever that speaker was over there to share God's word and her sin and forgiveness. And she began to believe, but she didn't stop there. She didn't just stop and say, well, God used the means of radio to bring her to faith. But she went further. This aunt invited her to be a part of a, a, a Lutheran Hour uh, meeting group to help others. And she allowed her to participate with her and, and reach out to still more people. So now this young lady is not only a believer, but one that's helping others to believe as well. That's what I mean when our, our book and the service and Esther, God uses us for such a time as this. Even if you're retired and not doing the work you did when you were younger, God still uses you for such a time as this. Even if you're younger and in school yet, God put you there for such a time as this. Even if you're just doing everyday work as a parent or at home for such a time as this, God has put you here. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're going to continue the service with the Lord's Supper. And we remind of our offering at this time, we'll bring it forward.
Lord, receive these offerings and tithes for your kingdom's sake. Thank you that you use even these as means to do your work here and around the synod and in our district. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. If you're able, would you please rise for prayer? And I'm going to include also in our prayers today, uh, Dennis, and we'll pray is that his kidneys would uh, heal quickly, and also for Darius, who is dealing with uh, similar things. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all your gifts. We thank you for working through ordinary means. We thank you for working through water and washing away our sins. We thank you for working through wine and bread, giving us your body and blood. We thank you for working through your church and ordinary people to share the hope and good news with family members and others so that they may believe. Lord, use each and every one of us as we encourage one another in you. Lord, I pray that you would work through doctors, nurses, and all those in the medical field to be with those that are, are sick, including Dennis, Darius, Bob, Clint, Barry, Melanie, Larry, Nancy, Josh, Lacey, and Bill. Lord, bring them to full recovery if it's your will so that they can give you praise in this place. Lord God, I pray that you would work through the means of our city, our police, firefighters, as they do their work at this time. I pray for safety as those in the school system bring their children home, that you would protect them and keep them. Bless also all those that work to educate and grow, that they might teach such things that would be beneficial so people know know you ultimately. Be with this church and all of our churches that they might share your word boldly and more and more people would believe here in Sioux City and the Siouxland area. Lord God, be especially with Catherine, Kim, Phyllis, Chloe, Madison, Spencer, Timothy, Vicki, Haley, Mark, Myla, and all others in our hearts and minds. Grow them and keep them strong in you. Lord, into your hands, we commend all these for who, which we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night which he was betrayed, took bread, 
When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Come for the table of the Lord is prepared. I believe we will probably all fit up here almost. So you can come around the altar and we'll put some on this side as well. If you're able, would you please rise for prayer? Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this solitary gift. For you are the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake, you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine in you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated.